Yeah. So thank you for the kind introduction. And I would like to express my huge thanks uh, to the previous speakers, because actually a lot of stuff were introduced that I wanted to introduce, like nanotubes and scanning polariton interferometry. So I don't have to say anything about that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I would like to speak our latest results on um, when we use the um, near field um, infrared microscopy to, re to reveal the interaction between carbon nanotube plasmons and uh, the lattice vibrations of the underlying substrates. So one might notice that carbon nanotube is a 1D like is a 1D structure, but this is a 2D material session. So that's why I tricked a little bit my my title, uh, so I could fit in the topic. But it's okay. So they were already introduced by uh, by William, so I don't have to say anything. You know that we can cut up. Uh, cut out different uh, pieces from the graphene lattice and we roll them up to a cylinder and we, we will get different species of carbon nanotubes. And the most interesting um, uh, properties of them is that they can show metallic and also semiconducting behavior. And um, for the first blick, of course, everyone is really hyped about the semiconducting ones because you can make like field effect transistors out of them. But unfortunately, the selective production of, the, of these semiconducting carbon nanotubes is, is really cumbersome. Um, so in our older results, we use the, uh, the S-NOM to actually differentiate between metallic and semiconducting uh, carbon nanotubes in a real field effect transistor device. And uh, we could do that because, as we could hear, uh, the storm signal in the infrared regime is very sensitive to the local um, charge carrier density. So it is really easy to uh, actually distinguish metallic and, and, uh, and semiconducting carbon nanotubes. So poor, poor metallic carbon nanotubes, no one cares about them. But no, because we care about them and others, and William also showed uh, some slides. So they support really unique plasmon polaritons. Uh, and these few years ago, the, uh, these plasmon polaritons uh, were actually visualized by SNOM. Um, and these are very special because, as I said, the nanotubes are one like object, so the electrons are actually confined in a, a one-dimensional space, so the electron-electron Coulomb interaction is not negligible anymore. So, and this leads to a new electron state called lactinger liquid state, and actually the plasmons will inherit the properties of, of these states, which means that they will have, have long lifetime, thus long, longer propagation lengths. Uh, they have special linear dispersion compared to the conventional Fermi liquid plasmons. Uh, and another very important uh, property that they provide very high wavelength confinement. So we excite this plasmon with, uh, with these plasmons with, with uh, 10, 10 micrometer uh, um, wavelength infrared light but they have a, a wavelength around 100 nanometers. So that's 100 times of, of, uh, of confinement. And also, as we can see here from the simulations, the, the electric field of these plasmons are bound to, the, to its surface and decays very rapidly, which means that we have a very high out of plane and also in plane localization of the electromagnetic field which means that we have a very high density of electromagnetic fields, which is very important for strong light matter interaction. So the interaction between photonic modes and uh, excitations of matter can be uh, like uh, very easily understood by the coupled harmonic oscillator model. Uh, we have one oscillator representing the, the, the photonic excitation, the, the other represents the, the material excitation like uh, molecular vibrations or lattice vibrations, and they are, these, these two uh, oscillators are mutually coupled. And we differentiate between uh, two regimes depending on the strengths of, of, of this mutual coupling. So the first regime, when the, this coupling strength is much, uh, much smaller than the losses in the system. 
So this is called the V coupling regime, and in this regime, the, the eigenfrequencies of the two uh, independent oscillators are only, only slightly modified, but we still can see some very interesting effects like uh, uh, pulsar effect and, and electromagnetically induced scattering. And we already showed that we use the um, boronitride nanotubes filled with the uh, Fuller molecules, and uh, we, we could see actually enhanced signature of the carbon nano, uh, of the um, buckyball uh, uh, vibrational signature. Uh, and, and we were able to actually um, see few hundreds of, of these molecules, which is pretty nice, in my opinion. So the other very important, the other regime is the strong coupling regime. So when we overcome the, the losses with the, with the coupling strength, the whole system changes, so there will be a hybridized state. Uh, and the eigenfrequencies will be totally different from the original ones, and we will get the upper and the lower uh, branch and, and these very pronounced uh, avoided splitting of the mode, uh, avoided crossing of the modes, uh, and, and the new, new hybrid modes will, will split in, in the spectrum. Uh, and if, if I can go further with the coupling strengths, another regime can be achieved, which is the ultra strong coupling, when we can forget totally about the, about the damping and uh, the normalized coupling strengths will be the new measure. Uh, so the, uh, yeah, we could already see how can we actually excite plasmons or any polaritons with, with, uh, with the near fields at the apex of the tip. It can, pro, uh, it can actually support the momentum mismatch between the light field and, and, uh, and the polaritons. So we can, we can if, if there is available momentum from the tip near fields, we can actually excite different wavelengths, the, the, the specific uh, polariton with the specific momentum. Okay, so we want to, wanted to actually study the, the interaction of, of the plasmons and the substrate phonons. So, we choose the, we, we made a sample. This is just undoped silicon with a native silica layer on top, which is very thin, two nanometer. And also we exfoliated the um, hexagonal uh, boron nitrite flakes. And you just transfer the nanotubes on them and, and, and you can actually very nicely see these, these um, interference, uh, plasmon interference patterns. So, the, the silica and the HBN has, has two separate uh, restralen band where the, the phonons, uh, phonopolariton uh, can be excited. So measuring through the whole spectral range and, and actually to re retrieve the, the plasmon dispersion or the hybrid mode dispersion, we can actually assess the coupling. So that's uh, what we have done. Uh, you can see here we launch the, the plasmon in the nanotube. The electric field will interact with the, the phonons. So it will polarize the material, just launch also phonon that will act back to the, to the plasmon. So we will, in theory, uh, we will get a really fast energy uh, transfer back and forth between the, the, the two polaritons, which actually provides the, the, the physics for the coupling. So, uh, we just um, re-image the, the same area with the QCL laser uh, tuning through the whole spectral range. I show here some of, of the result, some of, some of the specific uh, maps at specific uh, frequencies. We can see that exactly in those regions where we have the restralen band of the HBN and the silica, the nanotubes just disappear. So it means we don't have plasma modes anymore there. And it is already a direct proof of that we, have very, we might have very strong coupling because that there is a complete lack of modes. So, but we actually analyzed more comprehensively the whole situation. So if we take line scans from the nanotubes, we can measure the distance of the adjacent, adjacent maxima uh, of, the, of the interference fringes or just calculate the Fourier transform uh, of these line profiles, and we can assemble a full dispersion map of, of the new hybrid modes. And we can see this here. So the manually measured values are uh, plotted on top of the, the, the dispersion map. I call it experimental dispersion map. And we can see here 
uh, I plotted here the reflection coefficient of the, of the um, um, native silica layer. So we can see that exactly here we have a gap of modes. Uh, and actually, if we go into the details, there are two uh, interface phonon modes of the silica layer. That is one at the, at the air silica interface, the other is the silica silicon interface. And since the nanotubes are lying on the, on the silica surface, we expect that this mode can be just, um, uh, just um, leave out from, the, from, from everything. So we only consider this one. We know the dispersion relation of the plasmons. So we can calculate a theoretical dispersion map and assess the coupling more in details. Uh, but first, we have to find out the damping of the plasmons, which uh, we have done in two different ways. It doesn't matter too much. Uh, I have here the details, but uh, the important uh, message here is both ways we, we get the, the same, same uh, damping of the plasmons. Uh, so then we can use the coupled, uh, classical coupled harmonic oscillator model to assess the coupling. Uh, we can see with, that if we use a coupling strength of 150 wave numbers, we get a pretty nice match with the experimental dispersion map. And actually, this splitting also suggests uh, this coupling strength. So both the fitting uh, to this, this map and both the fitting of, of these splitted modes give the same, same results. So we can assess the coupling now and, and we found that uh, by the criterion uh, for the strong coupling, we are well in the strong coupling and actually we also reached the ultrasound coupling regime. Um, and we wanted to do the same for the HBN, but unfortunately the the plasma fringes cannot be seen so nicely on, on the HBN, but we can derive other values. So we can derive the, the um, near field phase spectrum uh, theoretically, and we can fit to the real phase spectrum, and we, we got a really nice match uh, between the model and the, and the measured phase spectrum. And we can also see that the coupling strength just increased, uh, and also the, um, the normalized coupling strength is also uh, more deeply in, in the ultrasound coupling regime. So this can lead to multiple potential applications, like uh, we want to use them to track uh, different molecules inside the nanotubes. So because they are cylinders, we can put stuff inside, uh, small molecules and we can do chemical reactions with them. And uh, actually, the, the tracking of these reactions is uh, really cumbersome. Uh, but these, if, if the plasmons can couple to the molecular vibrations and, uh, and show enhanced signature, then it, it would be really easy to track these products. And also, one could uh, make like uh, one-dimensional polariton crystals, or plasmon crystals, just varying the, the, the underlying substrate, or uh, there, it was also proposed that carbon nanotubes are very promising candidates uh, for, uh, for uh, plasmon, plasmonic electronics, and actually the, the, we showed that the, phon uh, the phonons of the substrate can give an extra customizability of these building blocks. Um, so with that, I want to thank you for all the collaborators uh, and also thank, uh, huge thanks for, the, for, for Adrian and uh, other Sionas and Philip uh, at Neospec. So they had a lot uh, for us to actually push the, the machine to its, to its uh, far limits. Uh, and uh, thank you for your very precious attention. Thank you.